Chancellor, President, faculty and staff, honored guests, graduates and families. Let me first say how deeply honored and grateful I am to receive an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from my alma mater and one of the world's preeminent education institutions, the University of Toronto. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend my convocation when I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1973, uh, nor for my Bachelor of Education the following year. Now, it's not often that one gets a chance to cash a 50-year-old rain check. <laughs> so it's a special privilege for me to finally be able to experience the thrill and satisfaction of a convocation ceremony with all of you graduates today. In addition to my time as a student, as you've heard, I was delighted to be associated with the university through my role as co-chair of, of its investment committee over a 12-year period. During that time, I had the privilege of advising U of T presidents David Naylor and Merrick Gertler, interacting with three very talented leaders of the University of Toronto Asset Management Organization, including Chuck O'Reilly, who's here today, and the wonderful experience of working closely with my co-chair Jeff Matus and other members of the investment committee. UTAM's investment performance and leadership in the area of ESG have truly been exceptional throughout that period and thereby have contributed in a tangible way to the fulfillment of the university's mission. Now, given that most of my career has been spent in the business and finance sectors, I'm particularly pleased to experience this day with all of you graduates of the Rotman Commerce in the Faculty of Arts and Science program. Sincere congratulations to all of you for what is truly a significant achievement. This is a challenging program to gain admission to and a very demanding one to complete successfully. So you should justifiably feel a great deal of pride and satisfaction in what you've accomplished. And you'll now forever be associated with two of the most recognized and respected brands in the global university sector, University of Toronto and Rotman. While I was the CEO of the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, we, we hired a lot of Rotman and U of T graduates. And that was due to our confidence that we would be adding well-educated, well-rounded, self-motivated, talented, and diverse individuals. And that belief was invariably validated through the performance of those we hired, which of course only reinforced our interest in continuing to do so. All of you now have the opportunity to validate that same Rotman U of T brand promise by what you accomplish in the years ahead, which will then enable future graduates to benefit from the reputation that you helped to solidify. Now, I'm still often asked to meet with students or recent graduates like yourselves to discuss their career plans and options and to offer some advice. One thing I've been struck by in recent conversations is often a high degree of anxiety that many students and graduates exhibit about their perceived need to have charted out a very clear career path and the assumed criticality of securing the ideal first job with the ideal company as the starting point. I can certainly understand the sense of pressure, especially if you think that others around you have their roots all figured out and are executing their plans accordingly. And while I wouldn't at all diminish the importance of having plans and objectives, I would urge you to approach them with a, a degree of openness and flexibility rather than the precision that I often observe in those conversations. 
And in saying that, I'm clearly influenced by my experiences at the outset and early stages of my own career. After obtaining my BA and B.Ed. degrees, I began working as a high school math teacher, fully convinced that would be my lifelong career. And one of the appeals of teaching to me was that it provided a very clear career path from classroom teacher to department head to vice principal, eventually principal. But in my fifth year, notwithstanding the very positive experiences I had as a teacher, I realized that I no longer saw that as the ideal path for my future. After doing research, taking some aptitude tests, I made the decision to change direction and become a chartered accountant. I took night classes in my sixth and final year of teaching and then returned full-time to university for a year to get my required business and accounting credits before joining Price Waterhouse. Once again, I was attracted by that very clear career progression that the CA profession affords. The route to partner, as well as the time frame to achieve that was very explicitly laid out. But four years later, I came to a similar conclusion as with teaching, that I no longer saw the partnership opportunity as the most compelling long-term option for me. So I may have been a bit of a slow learner in this regard, but after two tries, I finally discovered that I didn't actually need or even want to be in highly structured work environments. The next role I, I took was with Merrill Lynch Canada, part of a global investment banking brokerage company. I, I joined as a manager in the financial an analysis, was promoted to treasurer within 18 months, then asked to, about a year later to, uh, by the head office in New York to move to London as executive director of finance for Merrill Lynch Europe in the Middle East, and arrived just in time to help navigate through the Black Monday market crash of October 19th, 1987. Now, this was the complete antithesis of the somewhat regimented environments I had previously worked in. There was certainly no way I could have anticipated or planned for all those moves within those time frames. And I realized that this was exactly the kind of culture and organization I could thrive within. Those early experiences helped me discover that what really motivated me was challenge and change. After Merrill Lynch, I took on numerous other roles within a variety of companies and sectors, most of which were characterized by the need to either fix or build something. And these culminated, as you've heard, in my, my final position as CEO of the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, where I had the opportunity to over see the, its evolution from a very small 50-person company when I joined that had purposely outsourced everything possible to about a thousand employee organization with strong internal investment capabilities spread across offices and major financial centers around the world by the time I retired eight years later. So, I hope my story and experiences might provide some relevant perspectives to you as you deal with the understandable pressure of figuring out and executing your career plans. I really do encourage you to approach these next few years as an important process of self-discovery and awareness about the types of work roles, cultures, and organizations that will best provide personal satisfaction and fulfillment. For many of you, that will undoubtedly mean a validation of your initial choices and plans. That's a wonderful outcome, which then allows you to pursue them with whatever degree of intensity you decide. For others, it may take several years and a detour or two before you find out what you're ideally suited for, as was my experience. 
And if that does prove to be the case for you, don't look upon those detours as setbacks or missteps. I never once thought that about the years that I spent teaching or in public accounting. They're just an essential part of your learning process. And each one will give you important additional skills and perspectives that you'll be able to draw upon in the future. I also wouldn't be concerned that you'll forever end up lagging behind your peers who may have taken a more direct route. Once you're in an environment that suits you well, and provided you're motivated to do so, you'll have lots of opportunity to progress rapidly and achieve success. So in conclusion, I'd again like to extend my congratulations to all of you graduates on your wonderful accomplishment, along with my best wishes for much success, satisfaction, and fulfillment in the years ahead. Thank you.